everybody, how you doing? Here we go. Day three, filming with the Tackle Warehouse guys for the vlogs. Uh, we've seen a lot of different scenarios. We start at Lake A, shallow water lake, typical fall fishing. We went to clear glacial lakes in North Jersey for an extremely tough day, but we've saved the best for last for you. Today we're out here at one of my favorite places in the entire Northeast. We're on the upper Chesapeake Bay, uh, also known as the Susquehanna Flats. It's fall, uh, we've got a cold morning, it's cloudy, and the fish are coming in the creeks. We're gonna talk more about that fall pattern, but keep your eye out for this vlog. It's gonna be a great episode. Come on, let's fish. You ever see that zone episode where he pushed me in the water? It happened right here. <laughs> yeah. I broke it. What did I break? Six and eight rods that I had? I fell on my rods and broke them all. Said it's the one time of the year where you actually want incoming water. It's pretty strange. You know, most of the time you want outgoing. But in the fall, because fish are coming into the creeks, they're coming into these creeks because of the bait. But they're also coming in these creeks because this is this is pretty much where they're going to spend their winter. So because of that, you actually want a lot of times you want incoming water. It's it's a very strange scenario, you know. So right now, you know, we, we're going to have to deal with just a little bit of tough fishing until this water starts to move. You know, tidal fishery current is key. You, you know, you want water moving. Still waters generally. 99% of the time, not a good thing, but but we'll fish through this tough period. That water will start moving at some point. It's got to start moving. And when it does, we uh, we should start catching them. The other thing, you know, in the fall, talked about it for two straight days and want to keep talking about it, is that because they're feeding on bait, fish are moving, and you have to have a lot of rods on the deck. We started with eight rods. We're probably going to end up with more. And... Um, you got to keep fishing till you find them, you know? They'll tend to get up in little pods, they'll be in little groups, so cover a lot of water, try to get a couple bites, and then dial it in. That's fall fishing. We'll catch them on this brat today. Yeah, I, I pulled out a few of the ones. Here's one, big one. On a brat. Oh gosh, go oh, big one. I mean, that is such an early bite. To get an early bite like that, I mean, we have been out here five minutes. And and look look, look where that fish, oh, he's barely hooked. Got him, got him. Look where that fish is hooked. We're here, we've been out here. Gosh, it hasn't been five minutes. And I just got done saying in the fall, keep changing, keep changing until you find something. I went from a jig and a spinner bait I picked up this crankbait and fished rock. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you pan in here over here in a second and look at this bank, but look at this. I mean, we just got here and caught one almost three, two and a half, two and three quarter on a little uh, square bill style crankbait. This is a crankbait by Rapala called a Brat. And I, I really wanna show you, this is a great image before I unhook it of, look at that bait. It's short, it's compact, but here's the most important thing about a brat versus a normal square bill. Look at the bill angle. The bill angle is a lot steeper. And that steeper bill angle is gonna do two things. It's gonna let that bait achieve maximum depth quicker, but it's gonna deflect better off rock and wood. And, and I was down there, I was cranking, and I felt it go tunk, off a rock, and he ate it. That's a good start this morning. Uh, number one, Nice fish, real nice fish. I'd call that one two and a half, two and three quarter. Nice fat belly and see, you can, you can see by that gut, these things are feeding up for the fall. Look how thick he is right here in this belly section. That fish is feeding up. He's gotta eat. This is that fall feed. The fall has two periods. It has a fall feed and a fall transition. And that fish has gotta feed up before the winter. So number one, five minutes in. What makes me more excited about getting a bite that early, a good bite like that, is that, you know, it's telling us, hey man, fish rock, you know? 
Now we'll see, because la later it may change. It may change as the tide comes up or whatever, but it's a good early bite, you know? It's what you want. You, know, you get that bite like that, and it's like, I'm, I'm all geeked out to fish rock, but I also don't want to, it's such an early bite, I don't want to discount this other stuff either. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing now. Now it's total, you know, we're total search mode because we got a bite on rock, and now your mind's thinking rock, 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 but is it, you know, is it rock on the main drag, you know? That stuff out there has definitely has more of a flush to it than this does. This is not current-oriented stuff back here. So in the spring, like spawn, winter, this is good, but fall, they want a little flow, you know? They want that current. Here you go. Rock again. I want to show you this. This is interesting. We're going to play with the, start playing with the color of the bait. So bass number two, not a big one, a little 12-inch fish, but hooked on the back hook again. So here's the, here's the good news is we're, we're generating strikes. We're getting the fish to react on rock. Same scenario as that first one. The bad news is when you see them hook like this, something's off and it's usually color. So, you know, they're wanting it, but they're not fully committing. So we're gonna start playing around a little with color. Uh, this is a, a muted shad pattern. Maybe we'll go to a chartreuse, we'll go to a gold, and we'll see if at some point today we start getting these fish to eat the bait uh, better. So remember, look at the way they're hooked. And if they're all hooked like that, start playing with color. See if you can get them to eat it better. Number two. Oh, man. Here he goes. Ah, come off. It's not, they're not bass. I can tell they're not bass bites. I don't know what they are. Find out here in a second. Got him. Big one. Go no! God. That was it. So we're fishing a, a deeper rock pile. We're missing some bites, but when them catfish are hitting it, they leave their mark. You see that, that slime right there. It's catfish slime. So, you know, it's a good indication that you're getting bites, you're pissed them off, you're mad, you keep missing them. Look for that catfish slime. That's a cat. All right, let's get out of here. Big end. Mm. Oh, like. On the mini flip, finally. Just getting ready to say we have to make a move. But if you've heard one thing over and over in my last two Tackle Warehouse vlogs, it's that in the fall, have a pile of rods on either side of the deck. Look at, look at what we got here. We got 10 or 12 rods out again. Keep an open mind. We had some bites on rocks early. It fizzled out. We kept fishing, kept fishing, kept fishing. And an old standby. Look at that. Black and blue missile mini flip jig. I can't tell you how much money I've won on this jig in the last four or five years. Um, it's small, it's compact, but it's got a gaff of a hook. Look at that. You're not gonna see that on a lot of compact jigs. Trailer, another classic. This is a Berkeley power bait uh, chunk in sapphire blue, one of my favorite colors. And it's a small chunk. It's a three inch chunk, so it fits that little jig perfect. And dude, that's the kind right there that live in this place. Look at that, four and a half pounder, but look at the shoulders. Look at the shoulders on the top. That's the kind of fish we're looking for. We're almost three hours into the day, only three fish, and we finally got, got one of the right one, but on a deeper dock, you know, a deeper dock. And now, we're gonna to try to run with this pattern a little bit and see if we can make it happen. That's a good one. Big one, giant. Oh God, six pounder. Please stay on there. Look at that. 
Grinding rocks, man. It's been a heck of a day, but you got to keep grinding. Fall fishing is about keeping your head down and covering water. The one thing I can tell you about this area and this bait is it imitates the shad. You know, this is the area we started in this morning. We had our first bite on rocks and then we fished a while without a bite. And here in the last hour of fishing, we decided to go back to rocks. I lost a three pounder, caught a four and a half pounder. And you know, you gotta fish where the bait's at. If there's one key word in the fall, it's bait. I'm gonna say it over and over again. Bait, 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 especially in the early fall. And hey, let's face it, look at that. There's no better imitation of those little shad than that thing right there. That's a Rapala BX Brat. Um, the great thing about this bait is the angle of the bill. That angle of the bill lets you work it through rocks and wood. The other thing that's awesome about this bait is balsa performs better as a square bill, but balsa's soft. So with this BX, what they did is they wrapped a plastic shell around a balsa core. So the inside it's balsa. Man, that's a good one. It's a heck of a fish. You know, it's late in the day and we've been through, I don't know, 15 rods. You can see I've got a mess here. And, you know, we had three bites pretty quick, cranking rock. So I'm gonna clean the deck up now. I'm gonna sort of consolidate. I'm gonna try to get rid of a handful of these rods. Just clean up house, you know, clean up shop, cleaner deck. You know, when you start to get a little dialed in, sometimes it's great. You know, you have to have a lot of rods on the deck. But once you start getting a little dialed in, um, not a lot of time left to fish. It's okay to clean up. So I'm gonna spend just a little time here, just a second, clean up this mess. Put a couple of these rods away, put a couple spinning rods away here real quick. You know, fall fishing tends to be lumped together by anglers as just one period. But fall fishing, you know, you could actually break it into two periods. Um, the early fall, which I call the fall feed, and that's what we're in right now. And um, you know, that early fall, fall feed, that's when those fish are actively feeding. They're keen in on bait. Bait's the most important thing. Um, and they're trying to fatten up before the winter. That early fall or fall feed, you can look at your temperature gauge. And when that temperature gauge is anywhere from the mid to upper 60s down to the low 50s, that's that fall feed. That's when them fish are gonna be aggressive. You gotta move with the bait and it's all about bait fish. But the second period in the fall, and we're, we're probably right here right now, we're three to four weeks away from it, is the late fall period. The late fall, or it's also known as the fall transition. And that's a different fall period. And what happens then is the fish have fed up. You know, that early fall, fall feed, they were eating, eating, eating. And then the water gets to about low 50s or colder. And when that happens, they start thinking about winter. They start thinking, hey, you know, it's, we, we gotta get to our wintering places. We gotta travel to where we're gonna spend our winter. So in that late fall or fall transition, it becomes more about fish moving to go to where they're gonna spend the winter. So biggest tip for that is look at your temperature gauge. When your temperature gauge is, you know, mid to upper 60s to the low 50s, cover water. Have 20 rods on the deck. Constantly keep your eye and your depth finder out for bait. Once it gets below the low 50s, start thinking about where are those fish gonna winter. Look for those secondary points, those main points, that deeper water, and that's where you're gonna find the fish. Throwing that outside rock. Mm-hmm. Another victim of the brat. You know, one of the keys when you're cranking shallow rock like this with a square bill, I'm using a, a rappel of BX brat, is you always want that thing changing direction. You know, the brat's got a really unique angled bill that when it's hitting stuff, it's gonna change direction. 
But the other thing I do, if you watch the way I'm reeling, is I'm constantly changing the movement and action of the bait. Like, I'll throw it out there and I'm gonna bump a little and I'm gonna let the bait bump. But once I get past the rock, I'm actually stutter stopping my retrieve. And I'm doing that because the whole way back, not just when it's near the rock, but the whole way back, I want that bait changing direction. Listen to me, this is the most important thing right here. 90% of the bites you get on a crankbait, especially this BX Brat, happen when the bait changes direction. You can do that by banging it off a cover, like wooden rock, but when there's no wooden rock to bang off of, use your reel, use your rod. You're gonna see me throw little kind of jerks into it because the whole way back, I want that bait changing direction. It's the most important thing in shallow cranking, especially with this BX Brett. You know, the other important thing is the rod and reel I'm using. And um, this is really a specialty rod and reel for crankbait fishing. And uh, this is a rod by Abu Garcia. It's a Mike Iconelli delay rod. And you see that word delay right there in the handle. And, and delay means that this rod is built for lures where you want the fish to get it. You know, this is a crankbait. So when that fish hits it, I don't want to pull it away from him before he gets it. I want to let him get it and I want to add delay. And the way you do that with the rod is by using a composite rod. This rod is part glass, part graphite, and I want to show you the tip on it. Real super spongy. This is a seven foot medium action delay rod. It's super spongy. So the rod is going to add that fraction of a second that you need for that fish to get it. The other cool thing about the delay rod is that because it's so whippy, it's parabolic. And a parabolic rod let you load the bait. So this BX Brat, it's not a super heavy lure, but I can load that bait, use the flimsiness of the rod to really throw it a long ways out there. You know, on reel, I'm using uh, Abu Garcia Revo Ike, but I want you to look at that ratio. The most important thing when I'm crankbait fishing, I'm using a six, six to one, six, six to one. And what that does is that's a reel that has more power than speed. And it lets me fish this crankbait more methodically, right? It lets me keep a nice steady rhythm on it without overfishing it through the fish. So a lower gear ratio reel like this uh, Revo Ike 661. And last but not least is the line. When I'm crankbait fishing, I would say 85% of the time, I like fluorocarbon. Um, and fluorocarbon is superior because uh, it, it sinks, it's dense, and a dense sinking line when you're crankbait fishing means maximum depth and maximum action. So uh, 12 to 17 pound fluorocarbon, this is 12 pound Berkeley, 100% trilene fluorocarbon. It's the perfect complement to this whole system of shallow cranking. Oh my God, oh, oh, giant, oh. oh my God, wow, that was awesome. Man, that was so worth it. I mean, it's gone. I'm gonna have to get the Gerber out for a little surgery on this one. I mean, absolutely clobbered it. We switched it up. Once again, typical fall fishing. Here we go. Went from a jig and a, and a raffle of crankbait to a little a Mullix buzz bait. This is a Mullix Lover Buzz Junior SS. Listen to this. Listen to the squeak. The SS stands for squeak. Listen. There it goes. I noticed, we noticed a lot of fish blowing up in here. And, uh, and so we came through with the crankbait, couldn't get a bite. We switched it up and look at that. Got a real good one right there. We're gonna let this one go. This one's bleeding a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this fish go. And make sure uh, we don't kill this fish. That's a good one. Almost four pound fish right there on the top water. What a bite. 
You know, today was was tough, but we definitely found a couple key baits. Uh, Square bill BX uh, Brat crankbait was one for sure. Seemed like that was key around rocks. But then when we got to docks or hardcover, um, a little half ounce black and blue missile mini flip jig. You know, this jig's kind of special because a mini flip is a compact jig. It's a small finesse profile, but it's got a super strong hook in it. Um, the other thing that's great about the mini flip is the head design. If you look at that head design, it is what I call weight forward. It's almost a teardrop shape. And because of that, it slips in and out of cover real well. So compact bait. In the fall, it's tough. You want a smaller jig. And also the shad we're seeing, a lot of it's small. So that makes sense. And then the trailer, this is for sure one of my favorite trailers. This is a Berkeley Power Bait Chunk trailer in a color called Sapphire Blue. And it's a really good color when you have stained water, like what we're dealing with here. And of course, it's power bait. The three inch is perfect on a mini flip because when you're using a compact jig, you wanna keep that whole profile really small. Um, you know, basically what we've been doing is trying to cast in and around these docks, the pilings. And uh, once it gets on the bottom, I just sort of wanna feel around. I'm actually feeling the bottom, you know, taking my time with the jig, really easing it around. Rod and reel uh, is simple for this bait. I've designed a rod by Abu Garcia uh, just for this. This is the 7.2 medium heavy power series rod. The 7.2 medium heavy power series. This is the exact rod I designed for jig fishing. Um, with the reel, we're using a low profile uh, Revo MGX Extreme in an eight zero to one. You want a fast retrieve. A lot of them bites, they'll hit it, they'll come at you, so you need, you need really quick line recovery. You know, and then when it comes to line for jig fishing, I really prefer straight fluorocarbon about 75% of the time. Um, I like heavier stuff, 15 to 25 pound, Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. Today we're throwing 17 pound fluorocarbon. Big one. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh no, he's got me around the pilot. God, don't you do it. Oh my God, it's a giant. This is the way to end the day right here on the missile mini flip. Oh my God. Oh my God. Man, let me tell you, boy, I hope you had as much fun as I did over the last few vlogs. This has been three days of classic fall fishing. Having to read the water that's in front of you, switch baits, identify what's key. Most importantly, stay in areas that have the bait. Man, I hope you learned a lot. There's another fish on that missile mini flip jig, black and blue half ounce with that Berkeley power bait, uh, uh, power bait chunk and sapphire blue. This has been an incredible few days. Let me tell you something. If you like what you saw in these vlogs, I want you to like, share, and tag this post for a chance to win some amazing prizes. And if you like all this gear, the jigs, the crankbaits, the buzz baits, Go to Tackle Warehouse, it's all on there. That's fall fishing, going Ike, Tackle Warehouse, Vlog.